This is Wii493 here with Digital Dojos. This is the fourth video in the learning HTML slash CSS series. And today we're going to be going over some more CSS um, attributes that will really be helpful when making your website. So I'll start off with a div here, with the class of test. Oops. And I'll just put text inside of it. So we've got our div, and this is my CSS file down here that I've included at the top in my head section. And here's my style.css file down below. It's I've got two of them open at once. Um, so test, and first I'll show you the border radius. So I'll add the border radius, and I'll set it to 10 pixels. Now you can't see anything because I haven't set a border or a background color. So I'll set a border of one pixel, solid black. And you'll see that if you look over here, the corners of the border are rounded at a uh, 10 pixel radius. So if I change this to five, it's got less of rounded edges. Or if it's, it's zero by default, there's no rounded edges, it's just square corners. So this will add a nice web 2.0 look if you do it the right way. Um, I can change the background color to uh, lime, and you'll see it applied it here as well. Um, it'll do it, it basically kind of just cuts out the div tag, the corners of it. So if you have a background color or a border, it, um, it just cuts out the corners and rounds them for you. So if we change the height, um, to 200 pixels and then we can change this to something crazy like 50 it's got really rounded corners um, you could even set it to 100 I mean you can set it to whatever you want and it'll round it you could even make a circle if you made the width uh, a little smaller see that looks like almost a perfect circle so it's a really uh, interesting tag it's it's not compatible with all browsers it is with Chrome and Firefox, and I believe it's compatible with the new IE9 beta, but it's not compatible with IE8 and below, because it's kind of new with the CSS3 um, tags. But um, if you're just learning CSS, um, if you don't already know, this was a much wanted tag by the community, because previously you had to use images and put the image in the top right corner and have four different images to create rounded corners. It was very complex and uh, it took tons of code but now it's just one simple tag. So the next thing I'll show you is the hover. So I'll take off these things and we'll just use the same div tag and I'll set the background color to lime again and then I'll give it a height so we've got our div tag here but what's really cool is we can create another attribute or another um, reference to the test class and we can put a um, colon and then hover so here we can have it uh, do specific attributes when, you, when we hover over the test div so we can set the background color equal to red so now if we come over here and we hover you'll see it's changed it to red obviously you probably wouldn't want to have that effect on your web page but you could do some really cool things um, with links the, the hover attribute also would work for a link so if we have um, create a link really fast so we can have the uh, this apply to all a anchor tags on the page. All A tags will have this. So we can have the uh, color be blue like it is already. And then we can have the A hover be black. And then we can also have it um, do an overline when you hover. So text decoration, and then we can do overline. 
So now when we come back over here, if we hover, we'll see it's black and it's overlined it. It's got rid of the underline and now it's just overlined. So you can also, you know, just have it underline only when you hover. So you can set the text decoration here to none. And then we can change this to underline. So when you come back, this is a common uh, effect used on a lot of web pages. If the links will have just kind of be blue, and then when you hover over it, it'll underline it, and then link off to the web page. The next attribute I'll show you is the float uh, attributes. So I'll set up two div tags here. Um, I'll set up a left. and a right. I'll just copy this. And this is um, what you'll be using to create layouts um, on your pages to create different columns. Uh, usually there's just a left and right column, you know, two column pages on most websites. So you'll see I've created these two but they're just on top of each other. So we'll do the left and the right. I'll give these a background color just so you can see. So they've got their different background colors, but we want them to be side by side. So first we've got to give them um, each their space. So I'm going to make sure they can fit side by side in the page width. So we'll set this to 150 pixels and 150 again. So now they've got enough room they can fit side by side if we wanted them to, but we haven't told them to yet. So what we need to do is have this one, the left div, float to the left. And then we'll have the right div float to the right. And now you'll see they're side by side now. So we could make this one a little bit bigger. See now they're perfectly side by side. But if we make this too big, it's going to overlap kind of like that. And so you always want to double check and make sure that um, for the width you have, they're not going to uh, not going to be wider than the page will actually be. It's kind of hard to understand until you actually try it on try it out on your own some. But you can also set percentages with this. So I could set the left to be 40% of the width, and then the right will be 60%. So that's uh, a neat way to do it. So we can set this to 60 and this to 40. Um, and then as the user drags the page, you'll see it automatically adjusts. So if we were to put some text in here, um, paste in some gibberish then you can see as the user expands the page the columns automatically expand this is called a fluid width it's pretty neat um, some websites use it it's it's a lot harder to um, code for because you've got to there's tons of exceptions like say you had a YouTube video embedded in the left column and it was 500 pixels wide and then when the user shrinks it down, the video would be overlapping into this, uh, the right column, um, which can be a pain. And it's, it's really hard to account for a lot of those uh, user error type things. The last tag I'll be showing you today is the video tag. It's a pretty neat little tag that has just been introduced with HTML5. And this also has limited compatibility. It is compatible with current versions of Firefox and Chrome. And it, I believe it's probably compatible with IE9 beta. But um, IE8 and lower, I don't think it's compatible. So we'll type video as the tag. And we'll set the source equal to the dojo.mp4 file. Oops. It's in the same folder. You'll see it's over here. You can see it's already pulled this up. And then we can set the width uh, equal to we'll do 350 pixels. 
and the height equal to 200 pixels. And then we have a closing video tag. And if within the two video tags, um, what you would want to put here is what would show up if the user does if their browser does not support the video tags. So uh, you could put something like that. But what you'd probably want to put is maybe a link that says download this video, uh, like so. And then you'd link them to the Dojo MP4 file. So then they could still access that video even if their browser didn't support it. And they would never even notice that anything was wrong. They'd just be able to still see the video and just thought you put a link there and wouldn't know that it's Im embedded. So there's some other attributes you can add to the video tag. Um, you can add controls. Oops. So then you'll see the controls are showing up here now. The play previous, uh, the volume bar. You can also add autoplay. And that will automatically play. You'll see if I refresh again, it automatically started playing. So you can use a local file in here. But what's also cool is that you can use a remote file um, such as an external video. So I'll put in this video from Twit, and you'll see it's automatically started. This is the um, latest episode of This Week in Google, and it's uh, downloaded the video and started streaming it to me uh, right within the browser, which is pretty cool. Previously, this required Flash and other things, but now, since it's HTML5 video, um, you can play it on the iPhone, iPad, you know, a lot of mobile devices that support HTML5, and uh, it's a really great standard that's hopefully going to take over the web very quickly. The audio tag within HTML is um, almost identical to the video tag. It's got the same controls, uh, autoplay, width, height, um, uh, type thing. You just change the video thing to audio. Um, I'm not going to go over that since I just went over uh, the video tag, but you'll see it's got the player right here. But um, the audio tag, it's identical to the video tag. You can use uh, local or remote videos. There's uh, just like the video tag, there is some browser incompatibilities with the file format. And that's one problem that will hopefully be resolved soon uh, within the community. Um, I'll leave a link at the, in the description to a website that has some graphs of which browsers support which types. Like for example, uh, Chrome supports MP3 audio files and .ogg, and Firefox only supports .ogg audio files. And then Safari, I think, only supports MP3 files. So it's kind of a mess there right now for all that stuff. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at digitaldojos at gmail.com. Make sure to check out digitaldojos.com and get yourself a blog set up, and we can talk more there. Thanks for watching.